The Mac Studio came out just over a year ago and I was waiting to buy my first major desktop Mac computer for all of my video production and podcast needs. I've had it for over a year now, I got it right on launch day and a few months after getting the Mac Studio, I got the Studio Display. And I have to say, it is my favorite Mac. After a year of editing hours of 4K multicam clips and doing podcast recording plus live streaming, the Mac Studio has never missed a beat. Never have I run into an issue where something froze or the Mac Studio failed during a live stream or a critical moment. It has been rock solid and I didn't even get the M1 Ultra version. This Mac Studio is the M1 Max version. It does have the 10 CPU core, 32 GPU cores. And because I was hoping this would be my Mac desktop for years to come, I got it with 64 gigabytes of unified memory and two terabytes of SSD storage. I still have 1.2 terabytes free, which I'm really glad about. I try to be careful about what I put on that. I have a network attached storage, a Synology, and a closet for video footage. Plus I have multiple SSDs connected. I'll talk about that in a second. But the Mac Studio has just been incredible. One of the best parts is the ports. Because I do podcast and video creation, I really wanted lots of dedicated Thunderbolt ports for all those peripherals. There's four Thunderbolt ports on the back of the Mac Studio. For one, I have the studio display plugged in, and that display also has an Opal C1 webcam plugged directly into the display. There's two other open USB-C ports on the studio display, but I'm not using those for anything. A word about the studio display webcam. After almost a year of using it, it's fine. I still use it for a lot of video calls and the quality is okay. I did like the Opal C1 after some firmware updates. It was really buggy at first. It was difficult focusing and the white balance seemed off, but they've had some software updates over the last few months. And I actually really like how the Opal C1 looks now. So I have that on top of my studio display plugged in directly to the display. So studio displays in one Thunderbolt port. I have my Blackmagic ATEM Mini Pro plugged into another Thunderbolt port. Going into that ATEM, I have two cameras. My Mac Studio's HDMI port is going to that video switcher as another input. Plus I have an Apple TV going into that input as well. So that ATEM Mini Pro is maxed out, but it's connected to the Mac Studio, which is great for any kind of video calls. I can use my entire setup, two cameras using my B-roll camera and using this camera. Whether I'm doing a live stream or just a video call, I can use that as my input. But it's also really helpful when I'm just recording video content because I have a preview monitor also clamped to this desk, which by the way, look for my review of this standing desk that I just got from FlexiSpot. It's the E7 Pro Plus standing desk. Really love it. Everything's screwed in and attached to it. So check that video out soon on the channel. So that's Studio Display, A10 Mini Pro. I also have my Mix Pre 3, which is not necessarily Thunderbolt. It's actually just connected via USB-C but I wanted it to be directly connected to the Mac Studio, not going through a Thunderbolt hub. I record a lot of podcasts and audio content and audio and video, and I did not want that going through a hub, just another point of failure. So my Mix Pre 3 audio interface is connected directly to the Mac Studio as well. And then that fourth Thunderbolt port does have a CalDigit Thunderbolt 4 dock, which gives me an additional three Thunderbolt ports and four USB-A ports that I can use. Now the Mac Studio also has two USB-A ports, which I just love the ports. Thank you for the ports. <laughs> so the HDMI port is going into the A10 Mini Pro. My two USB-A ports, I'm using one for a stream deck that's on top of my desk. And the other USB-A port, I'm actually using for my APC battery backup. That is a USB-A port and it talks to the Mac. So if the power ever goes out, the Mac knows to shut down at a certain time. So that's plugged into that other USB-A port. Every port on the back of that Mac Studio is being used. Ethernet plugged in directly. And even the headphone jack, I have it running to the front. I have like a headphone extension. So if ever want to use headphones with the Mac Studio, I have that option too. Every port is full. Now on the front of the Mac Studio, the SD card slot has been clutch. I use it probably every day putting in SD cards from things I'm creating. This SD card I'm recording on right now, it's going to go in that SD card slot on the front. It's amazing just having that built in, not having to deal with dongles or any kind of hubs or anything like that. Plus the two USB-C ports, which those are Thunderbolt ports if you get the M1 Ultra version, but just having USB-C on the front, it's great for charging my Magic Keyboard or connecting a peripheral real quick, or even my iPhone, if I need to get footage off of that, I'll plug it with a USB-C to lightning cable and those ports on the front are really convenient. Now when the Mac Studio launched, there was a lot of talk about the fan noise. And I will say, if it's completely quiet here in the studio, I will hear the fans, it's a very low, so it's not a big deal. When I'm editing video or recording video, you never hear it in the recordings. So that hasn't bothered me. And when it comes to power, again, even just with the M1 Max chip, I've been editing video on it for the past year, never run into issues. I can have three, four, five streams of 4K video in a multicam clip, no problem running green screen effects. It's actually running right now, recording the audio for this video in Audio Hijack. 
So again, just a workhorse of a computer. And I really like that it's a desktop. I know a lot of people are just laptop. That's the most popular Macs that Apple sells. Everybody loves having a laptop. But when it comes to having a dedicated studio where I film and record content with lots of peripherals connected and me not wanting to go through hubs for a lot of that stuff, the Mac Studio just being able to sit here always at the ready on the desk. I've just loved that feeling and being able to trust this computer because it's so powerful. Oh, and that CalDigit Thunderbolt dock, it's actually underneath the desk. I have three SSD external hard drives in there. I kind of swap around all the video footage and different Final Cut libraries between those three SSDs. So that's under there. Also, I connect my Stream Deck pedal, which is underneath the desk. I use the pedal to actually switch the ATEM Mini Pro switcher. I have one button going to camera one, one to camera two, and one toggling picture in picture. I actually use this companion app made by a developer. It's not made by Blackmagic, but it has been rock solid and I love using it. So I'll put a link to that in the video description also. And one more USB port on that CalDigit Thunderbolt dock is actually going into this keyboard tray in case I want to use the Keychron Q1 Pro keyboard that I have, which video on that coming soon too. I can connect that directly on the tray using that USB-C cord. All in all, I've just loved the Mac Studio for the past year. I really have not felt any desire to upgrade. I don't know why I would. I have plenty of storage. I have 1.2 terabytes of storage still free on the SSD. Even doing live streaming and camera switching on the ATEM Mini Pro and recording an audio hijack, plus forgetting to quit Final Cut in the background, never has choked, never have missed a beat. Mac Studio, two thumbs up. We still haven't seen a Mac Pro, at least at the recording of this video. And so the most powerful Mac you can get right now is still this computer, the Mac Studio. And if you're looking for a desktop computer that's going to last you a long time, I still think this is a great option. And especially if you're running something like ProPresenter and other software that you need in those live production environments, the Mac Studio is the one to get. Even just getting the base model M1 Max version, you'd be able to run something like ProPresenter with no issues pretty much for many years to come. If you have any questions about the Mac Studio setup, or if you actually have a favorite Mac, maybe it's the M2 Pro Mac Mini that recently came out, Leave a comment below. I'd love to hear from you and subscribe to the channel. Lots of content. WWDC is coming up soon. We're going to have lots of Apple news around then as well. Hit that like button and thank you for watching. Catch you in the next video.